Good morning, gang. Okay, we're going to do something a little fun today. Uh, about a week ago, I did a video on distilling, and whether it be anything from moonshine to essential oils to distilling water to feasibly creating ethanol, right? As in an alternative fuel if we ever got to a point where we needed it. Again, we're preppers, right? And somebody had emailed me uh, a question if I had ever heard of wood gasification. And I have. And I will admit that I've never done anything with it. I know what it is, but have I ever built a gasifier or something like that? No. Okay. So I wanted to go do a little bit of research on the feasibility of a wood gasifier, if it actually made sense for a prepper or if it made sense for me, if it was something that was worthwhile investing my time and energy and money into. Okay. So what I wanted to do was compare running an engine, if you will, on ethanol and running an engine on a wood gasifier, on wood gas. Okay. And so I started looking all this up. So I figured the first thing I needed to do was to determine an apples to apples comparison of the two fuels. All right. And so what I did was basically went through and said, okay, how much of either type of fuel would it take to drive a car one mile? Okay. Now, obviously you could do this exponentially. If you want to do it for 20 miles, do it for 20 times what I researched and found out. So this is what I came up with using the internet because no, I wasn't going to start trying to calculate this stuff all myself. I figured out, go find the information that scientists actually did, right? So the first thing I needed to find out was how much ethanol it would take to drive a car one mile. And I got this, 0 0.06 gallons of ethanol will drive a car one mile. That calculates out to 7.68 ounces of ethanol. Okay. So then what I need to figure out is how much corn, I used corn as because this is what I was talking about last week, how much corn I would need to make to distill 7.68 ounces of ethanol. And I got this slide and it breaks it down from bushels and everything that's sort of like that. But if you look on the bottom there, it says it takes 19.2 ounces of corn kernels to make enough ethanol to drive a car for one mile. Okay, but we're getting somewhere. All right, so now I need to find out how many ounces of corn kernels there are on one ear of corn, right? Makes sense. And we find that it's anywhere between six and 10 with a happy medium, they say, of about nine. All right. How they came up with the medium between six and ten of nine, I don't know, but I'm going off of the data that I pulled. All right, so nine. So we divide that out. So if it takes 19.2 ounces of corn to make enough ethanol to drive a car for one mile, and there's nine ounces of ear on a corn, or nine ounces of corn on an ear, there we go, uh, that means it would take 2.13 ears of corn to drive a car for one mile. Now, if you ever planted corn, you know a corn stalk usually gives you two ears of corn. So break this out. One corn stalk will get you one mile. There's your math, roughly. Okay. So there's my base on ethanol. So then I wanted to look up and see on a wood gasifier how much wood gas it would take to drive a car for one mile. And I found this slide. Fortunately, this gave me everything I needed to do in one answer that it would take 12.8 ounces of dry wood to make enough wood gas to drive a car for one mile. Okay, 12.8 ounces of wood is not a whole ton of wood. Obviously, you're not throwing a log in there. You got to break this up into small pieces, but just short of 13 ounces isn't ridiculous. Got it. Okay. So basically, it doesn't take much of either raw material to make enough fuel to drive a car for one mile. Now, Granted, you could say this, trees are probably a lot more abundant than corn. 
depending on where you are. Again, this is a, there isn't a one size fits all thing. Around me, there's a boatload of trees, okay? So that's a possibility, all right? I grow corn, okay? But I'm not growing as much corn as there are trees available to me. So give me that. So, so far, so good. So both of them are feasible at this point and not overly ridiculous. So then I got into the problems that you would feasibly have with either one of them, okay? We'll start with ethanol. Now, ethanol's easily stored, okay? I mean, you distill it, you've got it in a mason jar, poof, there's your liquid form, portable ethanol, no problem. It can be poured into a modified engine and run the engine, okay? However, the modification of the engine is not easy. This, if you look at this slide, that's everything it takes, okay? That can be quite expensive, because if you remember, ethanol is corrosive, so your standard rubber parts, your standard plastic parts, your standard metal parts don't particularly care for ethanol, okay? It's gotta be special types of plastic, special types of rubbers, et cetera, et cetera. Stainless steel, those are the things that you're looking at. So that makes it a little negative for the ethanol, even though it's very portable. So then you look at the opposite. You look at wood gas. Well, wood gas is practically impossible to store or be portable. To get wood gas in liquid form, it has to be cooled to 258.7 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. I don't care how cold you think it is outside right now. It ain't that cold, okay? So portability for wood gas is completely out. That's it, all right? So basically, the only way you are going to have any efficiency with your wood gas is your engine has to be directly connected to the wood gasifier to burn the fuel when it's in its gaseous state, okay? This can be done, all right, no question, and it does work. However, we're talking about driving a car for a mile, so building a vehicle-mounted system is kind of crazy as you look in this picture, and you can see everything on the back of the car, his whole gasifier, the hoses that are running over the, the front into the engine compartment and everything. It looks like, you know, something out of Mad Max. If you ever watch the TV show Mountain Men, which I used to love watching this show, uh, Eustace Conway, who was in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina, had a wood-powered truck. Built it himself, everything like that. It works. There's a boatload of videos on YouTube that you can watch from people building gas power, or I'm sorry, wood-powered cars. They do work, okay? It's not a new idea. If you go back and think about it and look at the history of it, back during World War II, when fuel was basically being used by the countries to fund the, you know, to support the war effort, the citizens back home, primarily in Europe, didn't have access to gas. So they started using this, using wood gasifiers to uh, move their vehicles. Okay, it worked. It got a little bit of traction in the United States in the 1970s during the oil embargoes. Uh, and people were trying to find an alternate way to power their cars. Okay, So it, this isn't new technology or anything like that. It's also something that you can pretty much build out of junk, you know, for the most part. You're talking about old barrels or propane tanks, things like that. I mean, there's a million and one different plans for these things that you can find all over the internet, okay? I watched a bunch of them in researching this. So kind of interesting to see the creativity that people got, okay? It's probably, if you look at the two things, a little easier to convert a car to wood gasifi gasifier than it is to ethanol. Now, I wouldn't say take your 2024 Dodge Durango and go out and do this, but I mean, if you've got an old 1971 Nissan pickup truck, maybe, hey, if you want to do it, go for it. Or I think back then it'd be Datsun. So, okay. So, yeah, I wouldn't do this on any, you know, 
vehicle that you plan on keeping. If you got an old junker around that you want to play with, hey, maybe it's a shot. Okay. So it's a possibility. Now let's talk about other gas-powered engines, though, with problems here. Like, say, a chainsaw. Now, as I said with a wood gasifier, it's got to be directly connected to the motor. I don't think you want to be trying to walk around, I don't think you even could, walk around with a hose attached to the end of your chainsaw, certainly not safely, trying to cut down trees hooked up to a wood gasifier, right? So that kind of rules that one out, you know. Ethanol, again, yeah, you can probably do it because you could, again, changing fuel filters and uh, hoses and stuff like that to ones that will hand, won't be corroded by the ethanol. Yeah, you could actually do it. So, all right, there's a plus. This goes back to the portability issue of ethanol, right? Talk about tillers. I mean, those are, there's another tool that most preppers have. Okay, now you can buy gas-powered tillers. I got one of those. You can buy electric tillers. I got one of those. Obviously, the electric tiller is not as powerful as the gas tiller, but it's still a lot better than me digging with the shovel. Okay, so in the tools side, the ethanol comes out as a winner, right? How about running a generator? Okay, this is something that everybody's got. I mean, gas power generator of some sort. And sure, we've got gas power, we've got propane, we get you know, dual fuel generators, whatever. You know, somebody may have a diesel generator, whole bunch of different ways to do it. Can you run a gas generator on either one? Yes. Okay, and there's a bunch of videos you can go watch on this. It's relatively easy to convert a gas power generator to run on wood gas or to run on ethanol. Okay, both seem to be pretty good ideas. The drawback to the gasifier again is the same thing that you have that the gases the gases that you're burning is actually relatively dirty. Okay, uh, because the smoke that's coming out, the gas that you're creating, okay, contains a lot of tars that can condense in the cooler parts of the gasification in, uh, system or in the engine, which leads to blockages, which leads to corrosion, which leads to, oh crap, now my generator doesn't work, all right? Ethanol is obviously pure because it's a distillate, okay? You've cleaned out all the impurities out of it, so it doesn't have that problem. However, again, like I said, ethanol is corrosive, so parts can be damaged over time. If you're not getting the idea right now, there is no perfect solution, <laughs> all right? But these are options, okay? You can build something like this to run a generator. Take a look at this picture here. Uh, and this is basically what a ground-mounted uh, wood gasifier looks like. One of the many different plans, but this was just a picture I want to show you. And as you can see, it's built with a whole bunch of stuff that you could probably go to a scrapyard and find. All right. Obviously, to build it, you're going to have some skills, welding being one of them. Though I did find one video on YouTube who, of a guy who built a no weld gasifier. So that is possible. All right. But hey, it's basically made from junk, so a little bit of elbow grease, some effort, and some luck finding parts, and you could have some sort of fuel system, okay? Either one's going to run a generator. There are many, like I said, many videos on YouTube that'll show building gas fires to run them. And then if you've got electric tools, you know, going back to what I said about the tiller, say an electric chainsaw or whatever... You could charge those electric tools off of your gasifier running gas generator, right? Or you could just plug your electric tools in with an extension cord, you know, whether they're battery powered, you know, like a lot of chainsaws would be, or whether you've got a cord like a lot of tillers would be in my two examples. So you could, so you could do it, all right? In regards to the generator part of it, Personally, for me, 
why would I go through all this hassle when I can just charge a solar generator and run any of my tools with practically zero effort on my part? I mean, honestly, to for either one of these applications to build either one of these would be very time consuming. You'd have to put a whole lot of effort into it, which of course then means it's you're not doing something else, okay? And money. By the time all said and done, by the time you go buy all the parts or whatever that you don't have for the ethanol system, or scrounge all the parts and buy whatever else you need if you did this ahead of time, you're probably in the same boat of what it would have cost you to have yourself a decent solar system. Just saying. Okay. You know, you think about it, it's like, well, why do these things exist? Yeah, go back to World War II. We didn't have solar generators and solar panels. Go back to 19, the 1970s. Certainly not in the commercial market was there any solar system that you could set up. Okay, This was a viable option back then. Technology advances. I mean, we could go back and say, well, gee, farmers used to plow their fields with oxen, but now we have tillers, right? So things do advance, right? Does this mean that either one of these things are bad ideas, though? I mean, absolutely not, okay? For certain people, they may be the best option, and I'm not going to deny this one bit. Let's say you live in northern Canada or northern Alaska, for example. Growing corn to distill into ethanol probably ain't going to happen. Corn doesn't grow real well in ice, all right? So that's out. Six months of darkness? Well, that kind of rules out the solar part, okay? What does northern, Ala or northern Alaska and northern Canada have an abundance of? Trees, okay? Gasification may be a good idea up there because it may be your only option, all right? But it's the same as if you live in the desert southwest. Let's say you live in Arizona or Nevada or something. You know, there ain't a whole lot of trees out there that you're going to be able to use for gasification, there ain't a whole lot of water out there, which makes growing corn, which is a very water-thirsty plant, probably out of the question. So out there, solar is probably your primary, right? Maybe you live in the Great Plains. Not a whole lot of trees in the Great Plains. Have you ever driven through Nebraska, ever driven through Kansas, Iowa, stuff like that? You see the occasional tree surrounded by miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of cornfields. Okay. They get sun. Good, they could use solar. They could also use ethanol. The wood gasification, probably not a great idea. Me, for where I am, I live in a freaking forest. There's plenty of wood, okay? I get plenty of sun, solar works, you guys know that. It's what I run my house on, okay? And I can grow corn. Okay, so I have the option for all three. Not bad, right? But as I've said many times before, there is no one-size-fits-all to prepping. Everybody needs to have a PACE plan, P-A-C-E, if you know what that is. Primary, alternate, contingency, emergency. We like to call them backups to our backups. Okay. I don't plan on building one of these anytime, hopefully ever, all right, but what I did do and what I encourage everybody else to do, hopefully a lot of you guys have this, is your folder, as I call it, where I have details on just in case of emergency, what can I do? I'm going to link below in the description uh, the Instructables page, if you ever heard of that website and teach you how to make things, okay, on how to build a wood gasifier. I'm not saying go out and do it, unless you want to. You want to go have some fun, okay? Uh, build something like this, but at least have the document. So should something ever go crazy and you need an alternate source of fuel, maybe this is an option. Not saying it's for everybody. Nothing is. But better to know than not to know. Have a good one. Pimple out.